Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Going to 5,000 subscribers September 7th, Texas LSU. Can't wait. Here today, talk about our Cowboys. Starting up our Cowboys training camp series, and what better way to do that than to continue to dispel some myths regarding Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott. A lot of news, media painting a certain narrative about our football team. I feel like we're a little bit under attack in regards to our, our young leadership, people checking other people's pockets, who should get paid, who shouldn't get paid, who can, you know, carry the team to the Super Bowl. Just narratives that I can't stand. And, and, and thank God for uh, some other Cowboys truthers out there, you know, trying to dispel the, the myth. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. But to, to talk about, obviously, Ezekiel Elliott's holdout, Dak Prescott's current contract situation, they really both go hand in hand. And, you know, let me start by saying this. My number one priority as a fan, and I believe the, the Jones family in our front office, is to retain Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and Amari Cooper. And if the focus is anything but that, I, I don't understand, you know, why we built the team we did, right? So, you know, and, and I, I truly believe that that is their focus is all three. And I believe as fans, we should be focusing on how do we retain all three. All three deserve new deals, no doubt about it. Where they particularly fall or slot amongst their peers in terms of position groupings and who gets paid them out, you know, that that will all be determined. But we have to take into consideration the 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 narrative that is being driven by whether it's people on ESPN or people on Fox Sports One about, you know, starting with Dak Prescott and him being an average quarterback, him being a bus driver, him being a game manager. And, and you see today on, I believe it was First Things First, Chris Carter and Eric Mangini um, just discrediting the uh, Dak Prescott, just saying, you know, he is a guy who, isn't even athletic, isn't even like now we've gone away, you know, yes, you know, Chris Carter also said he's just naturally not a good thrower of the football and he will never be able, we'll start there, he'll never be able to carry a team to a Super Bowl. And, and, and obviously this is at the heels of Ezekiel Elliott not being there and if Dak is going to carry the team. And, and, and how come Dak Prescott's the only person in the league not allowed to have help? You know, when we assess the greats, even going back to Joe Montana, did Joe Montana ever carry the 49ers to a Super Bowl? He wasn't allowed to have the best, one of the most innovative coaches of our lifetime, and, and, and Coach Walsh, or the greatest NFL player, arguably, and Jerry Rice. Like, he wasn't allowed to, to have that type of help. Or, you know, you look at anybody that's won a Super Bowl, Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. None of these players were allowed to play with other great players. But now we're talking about... And then he uses like Dan Marino as an example as if Dan Marino won a Super Bowl. And I love Dan Marino. Dan Marino is one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time. He didn't win anything. He got to one Super Bowl and got blown out by Joe Montana's 49ers. Didn't win anything. So if, if, if all the pieces aren't in play for Dak, I don't care how good Dak is, the Cowboys aren't going to win. My focus is on winning the Super Bowl. I don't, I mean, th this narrative of not only can you be good enough to win, but you have to win a certain way is ridiculous. I mean, we've seen guys with good teams because I, that's how I believe you win a Super Bowl is if you're on a good team. I've seen Peyton Manning win a Super Bowl and he literally couldn't throw and they set the record for most punts and his team still won a Super Bowl. But the Peyton Manning that was on fire breaking NFL records uh, when they lost to the Seahawks, he lost. So the team matters. You know, Nick Foles was able to come in as a backup and win a Super Bowl. I watched Joe Flacco get hot for a few games and win a Super Bowl, a part of a great team. So the the, the narrative that, that Dak is now supposed to be assessed, especially as a young developing quarterback who is 25 years old, and these are the facts. 25 years old was is one of the most successful late-round picks we've ever seen in NFL history. 
has a 67% career winning percentage and had to deal with, we talk about Ezekiel Elliott being suspended in 2017, unjustifiably so in my opinion, but he was suspended in 2017 and missed six games. In my opinion, you know, and so we, we finished nine and seven, but in my opinion, if I, I truly believe if, if he hadn't gotten suspended, I do think the Cowboys would have made the playoffs. But let's go into it since Dak's not allowed to have help. And he's only at the mercy. I watched uh, D'Angelo Williams today as well on first take say that uh, Dak's really good at handing the ball off. And, you know, I've seen people on Twitter say that the Cowboys win five or six games without uh, Ezekiel Elliott. And it's funny because they just resigned Alfred Morris, who was the person that replaced Ezekiel Elliott those six games. So lifetime, Dak has played eight games without Zeke because uh, we he sat the, the last game of the season uh, in 2016 and then the last game of the season uh, this past year against the Giants. So we'll, we'll essentially throw those two games out. So we do know that the Cowboys finished three and three when Ezekiel Elliott was suspended during a bulk of uh, those were the meaningful games, if you will. Let's break down those those six games, right? So they started off 0 and 3, and then they won the last three. But if you look deeper in, into that, two of those games, Tyron Smith did not play, and and one of those games was the Atlanta game, where we had the Chaz Green fiasco. So. Essentially, once Tyron Smith returned from injury for the last four games of Ezekiel Elliott's suspension, the Cowboys went three and one. That's just that's just that's just facts. That was without Ezekiel Elliott on the field. So a guy that was handing the ball off to Alfred Morris the whole time was still able to win three games, keep us in the playoff hunt. We were all the way in the playoff hunt. I was at the game against Seattle where we ultimately did lose and everything went wrong. But before, leading up to that point, where we still finished the season 9-7, and seven, by the way, leading up to that point, Dak Prescott essentially went 3-1 and one once he had an actual NFL-caliber left tackle in there, you know, after the Chaz Green fiasco. So this narrative that he's just nothing and we're, you know, we're at least a 500 team without, without Zeke, and that doesn't account for Amari Cooper, who was not on the team yet, Randall Cobb, that who was on the team yet, and, and some of the weapons were, were getting back, uh, whether it's a Michael Gallup, who also wasn't on the team then. All these guys also doesn't account for the fact that the offense is changing. I heard D'Angelo Williams say today, well, the Cowboys offense is totally built on Zeke's shoulders and, and totally around him. And that's why he does have leverage to the degree that he does to, to, to command a holdout, even though he does have two years remaining on his contract because of the workload that he's had. He was the fourth overall pick, and he's done everything on the field that the Cowboys have asked of him. Now, stepping away from that, the Cowboys have done a self-audit of not just the players, but also of their scheme, coaching style, which is an, uh, one of the reasons why Jason Garrett has not yet been extended. He is coaching for his job this season, and Scott Linehan was removed. So now we have a situation where D'Angelo Williams, the offense is changing. The offense is not just going to be solely built on the back of Ezekiel Elliott. And shout out to Vach Lombardi in the video he did on Dak Prescott's deep ball accuracy the other day. And I'll put that link in the description because it's, you know, it's it, as he said in his video, it's a myth buster, right? So a lot of people like to say, well, the Cowboys, and, and I heard D'Angelo Williams say this today, they, you know, people that guard the Cowboys, they put eight in the box. Chris Carter said it as well. And that was also, a, and, and, and basically daring Dak to beat them or daring Dak uh, uh, to, to win with his arm. Well, if you're not afforded the opportunity to even do so and you're not presented the freedoms as a quarterback that other quarterbacks get, since we love to play hypothetical games and remove Dak and say if this person was in this offense, they would do much better and they would win Super Bowls. And if Dak was in this other person's offense, they wouldn't even make the playoffs. So since we like to play hypotheticals, you know, why don't we ever look at the, the, the coaching? Because at the same token, I've heard these same people also say, Cowboys coaching hasn't been up to snuff. People throwing Jason Garrett under the bus. People that were throwing Scott Linehan under the bus. So that also had nothing to do with Dak Prescott not able, being able to take advantage of certain opportunities. 
Here's the further point to that. When Amari Cooper was acquired, they immediately went seven. They went seven and two to finish the season. They went eight and three to finish the season. If you include the playoff victory and the playoff loss to the Rams, so they went from being, I believe, they were three and five to turning her all the way around to eight and three to finish the year. Point being is, and Amari Cooper over that time was one of the leading receivers in the NFL. Point being is, they have they, they destroyed that man coverage when when Amari Cooper got here. When they actually gave Dak a weapon. Again, I, I, I know I started the video off saying Dak's not allowed to have weapons. But when he did have a weapon and people wanted to play man coverage and do the game with Zeke, we were pretty damn effective. Where we had problems was in the red zone, if we want to get real. Where we had problems was... We couldn't push the ball in a lot during the play calling, but where you actually have to run the football in tight proximity, we actually struggle with that. But we did not struggle moving the ball up and down the field once weapons were acquired and, and once the tight ends grew up a little bit. Michael Gallup started developing and really came on and got stronger as the season went on. Look at how Michael Gallup finished his playoff performances. Does Dak Prescott not get any credit for that? And that is despite, that is in, you could, some could say, in spite of the play calling, in spite of the opportunities that he was given. So, again, shout out to Vach for dispelling the deep ball accuracy, as he noted in his video of, of the, the throws. If you count in all incompletions, I believe it was 45%, and he compared it to basically an NBA three-point uh, three shooting, which is very valid. And if you look at, again, comparing Dak to his peers, and comparing Dak to the elite quarterbacks, he is right in line, you know, pushing the ball downfield when he's given those opportunities. So let's let's go back even to Zeke. Does Zeke, does Zeke deserve to get paid? Absolutely. I said that already. All three guys got to get paid, in my opinion. But Zeke also has to understand, you played an expendable position. You play a position where, the you know, a lot of wear and tear happens. You're not going to last long, and I get wanting to get paid now. And if I was the Cowboys, if at all possible, I would front load as much money as I could for Zeke up front so that you're not burned long term if, if, if an injury was to occur or anything else were to happen with his off-the-field issues. And that's something that Zeke also has to take into. He hasn't been the best citizen off the field. I'm not saying he's you know gotten into some of the trouble that a, a Kareem Hunt has gotten into or some of the others. But there are concerns of, of the trust that you can have with him long term. And yes, the team up until this point has been built around his workload and he's been the lifeblood of that. But there's a philosophical shift with Kellen Moore going on. And if you haven't seen some of the updates from camp, you haven't seen some of the updates from OTAs and how this offense is functioning and what the Cowboys are kind of doing to rebrand themselves, you better wake up. And to the national media, we have to do a better job in terms of these pundits of being fair and objective in your analysis of players. It's getting out of hand. And it's funny because a lot of guys are speaking out of both sides of their mouth. For example, Ezekiel Elliott being ranked uh, the eighth best running back according to Pro Football Focus coming into the season. You have guys like uh, Aaron Jones ahead of him from the Green Bay Packers. That's absolutely absurd. But what's funny is that Dak, when they like to grade Dak, they say Dak, is, you know, if you put anybody on the offense, they'd win because they have all these weapons. But when we start grading the weapons on an individual basis, we're de we, we start devaluing them. So if, is, if you're telling me Zeke is all world and the end all be all, why is he ranked eighth? I don't agree with the ranking, but you can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. Carson Wentz, who is often compared to Dak Prescott. It's funny because I saw a, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Burnwell on ESPN who did his five, uh, top five uh, arsenals or weapons, right? And the Rams, another peer of Dak Prescott, Jared Goff, the Rams and the Eagles both got into the top five with their weapons, like, you know, them having uh, Todd Gurley and Robert Woods and Cooper Cup and, and, and Brandon Cooks and the Eagles with Deshaun Jackson and Jordan Howard and all, all they, they've acquired in Zach Ertz, right? Cowboys weren't in the top five for that. Cowboys weren't in the top five for that. But yet, so those guys are allowed to have true arsenals and weapons, 
but then you guys but then you guys don't want to put the Cowboys weapons in there but then you tell me that uh, Dak has more weapons and all these things to work with you see what I'm saying like you cannot have it both ways so and and, 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 to, and to, the other thing to dispel what Chris Carter said today and to use that racial analogy that he used about you know looking at brothers when you're playing pickup and I understand what he was trying to say but to, to, to discount Dak's athleticism when many of us who have actually watched the games with our eyes have lobbied for him to use his legs more. And, and, and my biggest people, pet people with him was the sacks last year. But in the run game and to say that he's not a great zone read guy, I mean, look at the touchdowns, the rushing touchdowns, which, again, when they like to compare Dak to other quarterbacks, they seem to always remove his rushing touchdowns. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but when you include Dak's rushing touchdowns, even in the playoff game against the Rams where he was able to get us in the end zone with his legs or, I don't know, if he's not that athletic and he's not the most mobile guy, how he converted a third and 14 against the Seattle Seahawks in a playoff game where he was able to run over Bobby Wagner. I don't know how he was able to do that with no athleticism. But, again, Dak never gets credit for his leadership, will to win, clutch gene, charisma, being under the microscope. His throws... He, he has put more under a microscope than any other quarterback in the league when it comes to a throw-by-throw -throw basis. And that's facts, because if we want to get really real with it, Tom Brady wasn't very accurate last year, and he was able to win a Super Bowl because he was on a great team, but he threw more interceptions than touchdowns in the playoffs. He goes to a Super Bowl, doesn't throw, doesn't even have a, a, you know, a touchdown pass in that Super Bowl game. But his defense played well. They had a very good run game. And he made some timely throws. Let Dak try to win like that and see, see how loud people would be. But Tom Brady opens the game in the Super Bowl and throws a pick on the first play of the game. He threw uh, three interceptions in the AFC Championship game. But he doesn't get, that doesn't get held against him. Uh, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, and Tom Brady all played the Rams defense last year. Dak Prescott had two touchdowns and zero uh, picks in his playoff game. Drew Brees played, and I know Saints fans are going to come over and talk about the pass interference. I get all that. Drew Brees still had an interception in, the, in overtime and wasn't able to even get up to what they were producing points per game wise in the regular season against the Rams defense. He struggled. Tom Brady didn't even score a touchdown, and he also had a turnover as well as a few sacks in his in his Super Bowl game, but they were still able to secure victory. Again, if it, throw by throw basis, we are over scrutinizing Dak Prescott, but then we want to turn around and devalue Ezekiel Elliott. As a Cowboys fan, I want all my guys to get paid. I want Zeke back. I understand his 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 gripe to hold out. I understand his point about how the Cowboys ultimately ran DeMarco Murray into the into the ground before not paying him. So I, I, I do understand that concern. I do think though that with this group and, and how Jerry views them as as the new age triplets, they'll figure out how to get it done, move some money around reallocate you know some some other people's contracts and, and and fit everything under the cap especially with the cap going up with the additional tv dollars so guys don't all all, all quarterbacks miss throws so this scrutinization because i do think Dak's going to get more opportunities to throw the ball deep and we're seeing that in camp and in my next video in this previous series is going to be more along the lines of, you know, camp battles and, and guys I'm really excited about diving into this roster. But I just had to get some of this Dak and Zeke stuff off my chest. Uh, I ride for these brothers. They're, they are, you know, it's and it's also funny, we never talk about, we always talk about what Dak is without Zeke, but we never talk about what Zeke is, what Zeke is without Dak. And, and, and the reason why we don't talk about that is because quarterback's been available all 48 of his available games that he's been able to play. He's been available every single game. And can't say that about Jared Goff. You can't say that about Carson Wentz. So we also have to factor that in. Since his rookie year, he has played every. He started every single football game as a Dallas Cowboy. So you know when 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 looking at the contractual stuff and and where he's come from being a fourth round pick, because you know if you look at the national media, Dak's also not allowed to get better. You know we all we always talk about Dak as a 25 year old, as if he's a finished product even though we saw the development of a Ben Roethlisberger after the Steelers won a Super Bowl his second year. We saw a development of a Tom Brady. Dak right now is still younger than when, Tom, than when Tony Romo took his first snap 
first meaningful snap as a Dallas Cowboy. Keep that in mind. So I'm excited. I say that all to say I'm excited about my quarterback. I'm excited when my running back comes back. I'm excited to pay Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper has, you know, all he has to say is uh, eight and three since I since I showed up and turned the whole season around. So everybody has a valid case. And this is a special young we're we're in a good place. This is a good problem to have because we actually have the talent on board. And that's credit to Stephen Jones, credit to Will McClay and the front office moves uh, that they've made. So you guys love to chat with uh, fellow Cowboys fans, people that disagree with me uh, just on, you know, how I feel. But these are my thoughts and, and just trying to keep the truth, set the truth, yeah, set the truth straight on Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. Peace.